going to get a bit more of oh, this board sorted out I think today. I need to take these off so that I can sand the grip paint off the other side before applying the new grip tape. Also, by the way, whilst I'm doing this, if you want to see what a failed time lapse looks like, check this out. Okay, now all I need is uh, some to sand it away. And I've got some uh, sandpaper up in the summer house. I think I know what I've done. I've either bruised, fractured, or broken a bone in the f in the toe, in the sort of what? How do I? One of those bits. I'll draw an arrow. I figure that because when I push the foot like that, that's when I kind of get like sort of shooting pains type thing. You know, just sort of a sharp, short-lived pain. Whereas if I place the foot flat on the ground, then it's kind of okay. Now, where did I leave that sample? Ah, boom. And some block shaped in here, or even an actual block. Ooh. Yeah, perfect. Sorry. better than have a proper sanding machine. So what I was actually hoping to talk about today was the whole, the whole long tail pipe nonsense. I'm not a big fan of that whole long tail pipe thing, really. You're still going to see some of the funkadelic on the side, aren't you? Oh well. All right, first things first, baby wipes. So I watched a video, an interesting video, quite well researched. I do think this is another one of those, well, doesn't it really depend on how you look at it kind of things? <laughs> By the way, don't ever let anyone tell you that baby wipes are as good for the baby's bottom as pure water, because water can't strip paint. Baby wipes. Mm -hmm. They're actually quite good at it. Ah. So, what the research was saying was that if you are moving from a petrol or diesel to an EV, what you are effectively doing is moving at least some of the emissions from the tailpipe in cities to the where the power is produced okay fine that obviously makes perfect sense and what the youtuber was getting at was that that's actually quite unfair on lower you know from a wealth point of view because they tend to be near power stations and wealthy people i guess near tend to hang out near roads so by moving the emissions to the power station what you're effectively doing is, from a government's point of view, subsidising EVs for rich people and then moving the emissions towards where the poorer end of society is. And they can't afford the EVs, so they just get the extra emissions. That all seems to make sense, but as with most things in life, it's not quite that cut and dry. And I'll explain why it's not quite that cut and dry when we go get Jasper in a few minutes. You know, a sensible thing to do would be to spray paint these edges. No, I'll do that next time I re-grip tape it. Or I'll just get wider grip tape next time. But this grip tape isn't quite the right size, which is probably making me ever so slightly less careful than I should be. Next thing to do, this. Probably should be using a razor blade for this, but I'm not. Just needs the 
Do no good for my fur. Alright, take one. Um, and final bit of the puzzle, and the reason why I didn't bother spray painting that. I'm gonna put this stuff along the edge. Because I like this stuff a lot. Hockey tape. About ready to ride now. I uh, really should have spray painted those. I know I said I was going to talk about this uh, long tailpipe thing and, and why I don't really think that EVs or even government subsidies for EVs are actually unfair on lower income households. But I'm not going to do that right now because my proper camera with the proper mic, well the, the mic ran out of batteries basically. So we'll continue this once I've got Jasper and, and we get home. Jasper is uh, now being got from school. He's upstairs having a meltdown because he can't find shorts. Well done, thanks mummy for putting those in the washing. Really made my life much easier. I'll go deal with him in just a second. One of my subscribers has asked what is the normal setup that I use for filming this vlog? This is a Canon 70, no it's not, it was a Canon 70D, it's now a Canon 80D with a Zoom H1 mic on top. That's the thing where the battery ran out. One of the features I particularly like about it is the fact that you can do a time-lapse movie with it. Not something you could do with the 70D. And I quite like that microphone because it doesn't look too professional, which is important because if it looks too professional then people tell you not to film basically everywhere that isn't like the side of a road. But the quality is still good and you can also independently record audio if you want, say for combination with another camera that doesn't have such good audio, like this one. The audio is okay in this camera, but it's not great. That's my main shooting camera. And now I'm gonna go and try and find Jasper a pair of shorts. Right, hang on half a second, I just, my coffee's just finished. It's better. Right, now what was I saying? Okay, so this video, which was hilariously titled Stop Talking About Tesla. <laughs> Perfect, really, I couldn't make it up. It's a perfectly valid argument. And I, I see where he's coming from. I'll link to the video in the description if you want to check it out. Firstly, the air quality is not going to drop off a cliff near power stations just because they have to produce an extra 10, 20% more power to feed all these EVs. So that first point is just more of a sort of a, a practical reality of, you know, this is a shocking generalization. And this is the key point. It very much depends whether you want to think about life in a short-termist perspective or more of a long-term perspective. I am more of a long-term person. I'm not really interested in saving a little bit of greenhouse gas by driving an EV and buying my electricity from a company that supports renewable energy you know yeah okay it's nice it makes a tiny weeny little difference but really not an awful lot what does interest me and this is really critical this is the one of the main reasons why i was so keen on the leaf to begin with and so keen on tesla both as a car and as a company in the long term view using electric vehicles owning one putting your money into buying one even if you can't really afford it but you're shuffling things around a bit so that you can and at least you're saving some money on the fuel which does offset that the end result is it's promoting that technology it's making the car companies out there feel like they need to produce EVs and similarly with the power production you buy your power from a company that supports renewable energy and guess what what you're basically doing is making renewable energy something that is more and more desirable for energy producers to sell to the grid and this more long-termist view has got the potential to substantially reduce carbon emissions into the atmosphere and and quite possibly even get more or less to the point where humanity can realistically try and be carbon neutral which would be amazing and we haven't done that for like a thousand years or something ridiculous but it is doable if you take that more long-termist approach and try to encourage the companies that are building in what hopefully will be the right direction whereas you take the short-term approach and just go oh well, we won't give any ev subsidies to the rich and we're given to the poor. Ah, 
but the poor aren't going to buy EVs because if you take an EV that they can afford, you would still have an electric vehicle that cost too much and did not have the capabilities in order to replace their normal petrol or diesel. So if nobody's buying them, then nobody will produce them and the technology won't move forwards and you know, life will just basically suck in the future. Now, I'm not saying that we wanna be giving the subsidies to rich people, Jesus, no, they don't need them. What we do wanna do, however, is encourage them to buy EVs. So whatever it is that tips that scale so that people buy EVs, that's what we wanna do because as the technology gets picked up, by companies like Tesla. I mean, you see it, Tesla is the perfect example. They started out making toys, and then they made very, very expensive luxury saloons and four by fours, and now they're making sort of more mid-tier cars, the Model 3. It's getting cheaper and cheaper, and that progress towards cheaper and cheaper vehicles is going to continue. So that's, that's what I think. I think, personally, that the short-term pain is worth it for the long-term gain if we actually try to encourage and drive these technologies forwards, rather than just going, oh, this isn't very fair, is it? What I do know is that we need a hopeful future, something that is not going to unduly limit what we can and can't do, but at the same time is going to actually start to hopefully address the problems with sustainability that we have on this planet. Okay, so I'm, I'm gonna go do some exercise with Jasper, non-running exercise. I hope you've enjoyed today's vlog post and found it interesting. If you have, remember to like it, share it, and subscribe if you haven't already, and follow me on Instagram if you don't already, and I will see you tomorrow for the next installment of my daily vlog. Bye. I'll seriously sort out that summer house soon. It's starting to annoy me that I haven't. Oh, that's a bit worrying. Loose stone, that's all I need. <laughs> Be extra careful on the steps. Uh, I guess do the sanding outside is probably the easiest way to preserve my marriage. Oh.